Hello, 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 and welcome to yet another episode of the Conversation Capital. Thank you so much for joining us yet again. Don't forget to do all the things like share, subscribe, and do what you need to do to get the word out there. It is the Conversation Capital. I also want to say thank you so much to everybody that's been engaging with us. I need to say thank you every single time because our hearts are overwhelmed every single time just at the response that we keep getting. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As usual, as always, we're joined with the voice of reason behind the microphone, Bonga Bueta. Hi, girl. How you doing? Hey, hey. And today, we've got a beautiful, lovely guest. We've got Hika in studio. Hika, hi. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm awesome, thank you. I feel terrible. I know I don't know how to pronounce your surname. So unless you do you want your surname out there, would you like to but say My it? full name? Yes. Hika Tequile. I can't say it. He can take it. It's very easy. <laughs> Thank Such you. What does, what does mean? it mean? Yeah. It means we are blessed. Wow. Oh, it's <laughs> not yeah, so long. Yeah, yeah yes. it actually it's much longer in Sutu. So uh, we're chatting to Hika all things to do with monogamy. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the apparent or apparently apparent sounds like the obvious. No, the apparently scam. On social media, that's what they've been saying lately. That, that monogamy is, a, is scam. a scam. And so we wanted to just get into that today. And, you know, what, what is monogamy? What's polyandry? You were mentioning the different types of air. And maybe if we can start off there. What's the different things? Um, or categories. So monogamy mm -hmm. is a relationship that will exist between two people. And it is exclusive to those two people. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a monogamous relationship, if you get involved with other people, it's cheating. It's wrong. That's not what you agreed on. Mm -hmm. um, the other different types of, um, there's polygamy and there's monogamy, and there's different types of uh, polygamy. Um, there is polygyny, which is a man with m different women. Mm -hmm. Polyandry which is a woman married to different men, but that usually is a culture thing. It's not really something that a society just develops. Mm -hmm. um, and then there is polyamory, which is just a party. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, having multiple relationships mm -hmm. with multiple people that are, you know, open and honest and known by mm -hmm. everybody oh. mm -hmm. that is involved in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this, this thing is, is coming up now and it's becoming more and more prevalent on social media, the conversations around it. And, and the truth is, I think the biggest question is, is this thing really attainable? Is monogamy an attainable thing or is it a societal construct that we've been fed over and over and over and now we just need to live within the bounds of monogamy okay. is what it is? Um, how does it work? I think... Um what happened is monogamy was positioned as the norm and what everybody should strive for. Mm -hmm. And that is why now um, it's, it's become, I'm not mm -hmm. sure what word to use, bastardized, can I use bastardized? It's become bastardized in the sense that it has become toxic. Mm -hmm. So um, it, being with one person shouldn't be something that you have to think too hard about mm -hmm. you know but because it's been positioned as the only way in which you can feel and it's been positioned as a sort of lock and key mechanism mm -hmm. that once you fall in love with one person surely you can't fall you in can't love fall in love with another mm -hmm. and um, that has made it seem so much harder than mm -hmm. what it actually is um, also how we treat relationships um, we live in a society where when you get into a relationship, you come from a place of mistrust mm. and you come from a place of entitlement. Mm. Yes. And you get into a relationship and you believe, because I'm in a relationship, these are the things that I must get or that must be happening to me. And that just makes monogamy even harder. Mm. Um, you know, the principles that govern a relationship or the, the values that should govern a relationship should be no different between a a monogamous relationship or a polyamorous sure. relationship. You know, it, there should be honesty, there should be communication, mm. there should be freedom in your relationship, Autonomy. regardless of whether you are exclusive with somebody or not. But because of the entitlement and the expectations that come with positioning monogamy as a norm, mm. 
we don't have that. Now, relationship is a game, you know. You are making chess moves, mm -hmm. chess, not checkers, or whatever it is that um, mm -hmm. people say now. Mm -hmm. You're no longer honest, you're mm -hmm. no longer open, and because you believe that you should be monogamous, you cheat. Mm -hmm. And that opens up room for, like, all sorts of... Um, Terrible things. <laughs> yeah, that's why it it seems like monogamy is a scam when really it isn't. It it would be beautiful. It's beautiful to be in a relationship with one person, mm. and you know that you love that person and they love you too, and you you have a relationship that you're both happy with. Do you think it's attainable? Because guys, infidelity is probably one of the biggest causes of. Yeah. You know what? Infidelity. As someone who used to struggle with fidelity. Mm -hmm. It's attainable because I don't struggle with it anymore. I don't know what happened in mm. this current relationship or how or mm. I can't say I decided because All I've the tried. Used to be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't yeah, know where <laughs> you don't know which relationship there was infidelity. <laughs> However, as someone who used to struggle with in with, with fidelity, mm. um, I can say is attainable mm. because I was once a person who used to struggle. And it's not like I made a decision. I don't know how to explain it. Mm. Um, even with my partner, I don't know if it's something about him or mm. it, I made a decision or it's an unconscious thing. I think it's attainable. Mm. I think what is what we're, what the main aim should be in our society is that there's an alternatives and a healthy alternatives, mm -hmm. not where um, only one person is committed or only one person is remaining faithful to the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, it can be a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. And even the words we use, now I'm thinking about myself, why is it being unfaithful to be with another person? But I guess it's because you're hiding, right? Yes, yes. the moment it becomes a lie. Yes, yeah, then, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but... Um, it, it, we should move to a point where it's we have options mm. if you genuinely um struggle or or it, maybe it's not for you mm. but you would really like for this person to be the person who you live with mm. but now and there i was reading an article and it spoke about sexual variety mm. so let's say you want variety of sorts mm. um maybe you go out but it's an agreement and everyone is aware mm. of it you know and the other person doesn't feel disadvantaged mm. and i think what we think and why I, I like what you said um, about the fact that there's an entitlement mm -hmm. and there's expectations is because when some a person decides to have more than one partner, it's not necessarily because um, you like want him. sex or you want... There's so many other factors mm -hmm. that other people satisfy in you mm -hmm. that your other person um, may not. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean there's something lacking about that person. Mm -hmm. It's like how you have a friend yes. who you... Um, earlier in the other episode, make sure you catch it, you spoke mm -hmm. about the friend you nap with. Mm -hmm. And then you also, you also have a friend you go on dinner dates with. Mm -hmm. So we think about it as, um, no, you want to cheat. No, no. Mm -hmm. what if I want to satisfy other parts of, of myself? myself. Sure, you exactly. know, this is, you know, one of the things that made me really think about this monogamy concept. It was that idea of my friendships because my friends serve different purposes. And you love them all. And I love them all. And no one was shorter. That's just the get thing. Different things from different people. Love is, it's, it's abundant. Mm -hmm. And all of the relationships that you have are all unique, regardless of whether they're romantic or platonic. Every relationship that you have is unique and you have enough love for each and every one of those relationships. Why does that then change when it becomes a romantic um, relationship? This is so difficult for me because I'm definitely monogamous. Wow, wow, I'm so boring. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I'm, so boring. I'm so boring, you know, and I expect monogamy from my partner as well. Mm -hmm. So I actually, I appreciate and I respect when somebody says, hey, I'm a polygamous person. And then immediately I'm like, yes, you're not for me. Good Bye. for you, sir. <laughs> you know, but that's not my thing. Yes. You know, I definitely want to be in a monogamous relationship, you know, and that's always just been, and I, I'm just challenged though, you know, social media keeps challenging us and our thinking that is it because of the societal construct that I've never thought of myself in anything else, else. or is it that I'm naturally monogamous? Yeah. Am I a monogamous person or is it You the need construct? to interrogate that. You mm. need to interrogate that. You also need to interrogate what monogamy means to you. Does monogamy mean that you are constantly jealous and mistrustful of your partner or are you able to be free in your monogamous relationship mm. and not worry mm. about what your partner might be getting up to because sure. you're coming from a place of trust? Yes, mm. yes. So 
you you definitely need to interrogate, interrogate. what informs mm. what you want. Mm. With, we always say, no, but that's just my preference. What informs your preferences? Yes. Your preferences don't just come out of nowhere. You need to interrogate that as a person. And I, I always say, like, life is such admin because you constantly have to mm. reflect. reflect. Oh! It's so exhausting. Constantly. <laughs> You're always just trying to be a better person. Yes, you constantly have to reflect and understand yourself better, mm. see where you're coming from, see your biases, see mm. you. And then you know that you're moving forward from a healthy yes, place. Yes. So, yes, definitely reflect, can, consider can I what ask you might. Personally, what's your thing, girl? Um, <laughs> I'm polyamorous. Okay. I'm polyamorous. So, the one that you said it's a party. <laughs> yes. I, we see you, girl. <laughs> I'm polyamorous, um, polyamorous, pansexual. Mm. So um, I do date, I date people, like if yeah. I like you. <laughs> and yes, we can get into it, we can get into a relationship, we can get into a relationship. Um, it's kind of hard to be a polyamorous woman, um, especially in our society, in South Africa specifically, mm. because there are very clear roles um, mm -hmm. that men and women should play and those clear expectations of you know how a woman should be and how a man should be and how relationships should sure. work out so um, it, it does get a bit difficult, difficult. Um, sometimes you communicate things with people and they say they understand mm. and then the reality they see the reality and they're like no 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 i, I was lying yeah, yeah. you know mm. so it is um it's it's a it's a uh, a sensitive space mm. to to navigate mm. um it can also get difficult when say you are in two relationships and one relationship one relationship is having problems you need to be able to treat your relationships separate. separate and keep them as individual and you, the unique relationships that they are and ensure that the things that you're going through in one relationship don't affect you. Can I ask how many you've had at one time the maximum? Um, actual relationships, two. Okay. Two at a time. Um, but, you know, non-committal things here and there trying to build a relationship here and there. I, I don't know, like a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, stage. It was, yes, yeah. To, yeah, that's what we call yeah. it now, talking, talking stages, stage. yeah. yes. I, I had a habit of like running multiple talking yeah. stages at a time and building different relationships mm -hmm. um, at the same time. And then how do you reach a point where you say, I'm not monogamous or I'm, what's the word? Polyamorous. polyamorous. Okay, yes. so how what happens there? Like you become into you get into a relationship with one person and you're like, this is not for me, or what like what's the journey or your journey? I don't assume there's there's a one universal journey. one. <laughs> um for me personally, I got cheated on mm -hmm. um, when I was uh, nineteen. And um when I got cheated on, I realized that what really bothers me about this whole situation is was the gaslighting and the lying. So, you know, you can see that something is going on. You're trying to discuss this with this person and they're straight up lying to you. Mm. And I realized I wasn't necessarily bothered by the fact that this person is seeing other people. I was mm. just annoyed by how it inconvenienced me. Like, we'd have plans, but now your plans fall through because your other girl came through and mm. now you have to lie to me and inconvenience me and just leave me hanging, you know. Mm. I, I, I did not appreciate that. And that's what I realized that is the problem. Seeing other people for me, I don't have that issue. I realized I, I at first I thought I was just um, a cool girl, you know, when they say uh, the cool girl. Uh, I thought I was just a cool girl and I didn't want to actually say it out loud. I don't mind. I, I don't really have jealousy issues and I don't mind people seeing other people. But then when I saw what the issue is, like what, what the problem is, I was able to say clearly, go, I don't experience sexual jealousy or relationship jealousy, but I do hate the inconvenience of being lied to. Mm. So that's when I started opening myself up to the idea of, of just being honest, and, you know, yeah. and allowing people to be honest with me, creating mm. a space in which my partners can be honest with me. So when I started off, I didn't date other people, but when I dated somebody, I made it clear to them that, it's you know, okay. if you want to see other people, that's fine. That's fine. 
do that. Um, oh. Explore your options. What a lovely place to be. Yes. I don't want to <laughs> like that. The yes, confidence. Oh God, <laughs> nah. that, that, that serenity inside, that peace. Hey, boy. <laughs> that is special. I think you're saying a lot. Yeah. Mm. I went there. If I ever get there. Don't think so. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, do you find that people um, that you get into a relationship with, with are just like you? Or there are issues. They, they, they some There's often who, issues. Who are not as confident. They thought they knew what they're doing. And or... then, yes, I've had that a lot. And um, people who just don't trust me when I say that, they're just like, hmm, this is a scam. Mm -hmm. Is it because you want to see other people? Is it because, mm -hmm. you know, so there's that... There's something lacking in me as a partner. Yes. Yeah. Or... Have you found men that are comfortable with you seeing other men? It's hard, but <laughs> <laughs> um, when I started exploring it actively, when I had the words, when I discovered the vocabulary yeah. for my feelings, and I, you know, I read mm. writings that reflected mm. how I, I understood things, mm. um, what I did was I just dated men in relationships. Mm. When I dated men, to make it easier but for you myself. See, this is my thing. So you're at this point where you're realizing this, and mm -hmm. he's being honest with you as he's quote unquote side. But right. he's lying. But to he's lying yes. to somebody else. So at which point do you draw this honesty line? For myself. For you. Okay. There's not much that I can do. I'm I'm Whew. creating the kind of relationship that works for me. Yeah. There's not much that I can do for the what other person and yes. insist that he you know mm. I agree. And I won't lie, I do feel, sometimes I do feel like, ah, there's no reason to be, you know, that disrespectful. You're already lying to your partner. Don't, don't do, you know, those types of things. But that's um, how I, I navigated it. Mm. And um, that's how I'd have relationships. I, I actually actively um, avoided single men. <laughs> mm. For many, many reasons. It was also because it's hard to explain to somebody who doesn't yes. have somebody else that... And I can imagine, you know, the criteria of men that we have usually don't have a problem with you maybe seeing other women. Yes. But they, 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 they have a problem with you seeing other, other men. men. Definitely, that's the thing. Because we live in a heteronormative society and hey. non-heterosexual relationships are not real. <laughs> <laughs> I saw somebody in our comments say they're a cis... cis Cisgender. They were explaining their sexuality. Oh, cisgender. <laughs> or cisheteronormative. Something. And I was like, hey, I need to Google into that. <laughs> so heteronormative, meaning that the heterosexual relationship is what's, is what's the normal. normal. Okay. Mm. I broke it down for you guys. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, you bet there's going to be that. You're the men feel like, oh, okay, if you're dating another woman, it's fine. And then they do lose their minds where you're like, ah, I feel like this relationship with you is taking away from that other relationship because I see you actively trying to compete for mm. my attentions with that other person and I don't think that's a healthy place for us to be so I think we should end our relationship here and they're just like oh you leaving me for a girl mm. no <laughs> and you and then have you ever been in a relationship where I can't fail it's I would, ona ojora, ona, ona, ojora, ona, ojora, ona. You would love um, that. But I you would haven't. love that. I haven't. Um, I I met a, a polyamorous man once, um, and you know it, that was actually really great for me. Um, we had it was an experience. It was, it was an experience meeting somebody else who understood that and understood that me seeing other people doesn't mean. I don't care about him at mm. all or whatever. But I almost fell into a trap of getting into a monogamous relationship with this polyamorous man because um, when I met other people, it's not always easy to explain that I have a person in my life and they also have other relationships. Mm. The entitlement comes back. But I'm here. Why aren't you getting into a monogamous relationship mm. with me? Why do you insist on keeping this other yes. person there when I'm here and I'm willing to give, give you a monogamous you. relationship. Oh my just... God. This makes me think about how we, 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 we almost rate them. Like you are better off with just one person. Mm -hmm. I'm here to give you all my love. Like, mm -hmm. 
mm. as if that's better than what I have, have right now. You yes. know? Which is not always the case for people that are polyamorous. It doesn't mean being with one person is the be all and end all for me. You know, I that's so yeah. I'm always the problematic one. <laughs> or the one who is behind the times because i'm just like that's exactly what i want <laughs> you know like i don't know is it like a, a slowness to progress but i i am seeing how and this is the part where i needed to admit some men are just not monogamous okay you can do whatever you want to do <laughs> you can cook you can bake six There's nothing. five times a week oh, is that a lot of this i don't know Many times a week, <laughs> you know, whatever. But there are some men, they'll just never be monogamous. And you know what's, what's crazy, um, or what, I don't know the word, but is the fact that if you would give some of them the option to openly be polyamorous, yes, they would they not take that. it because it's like, why are you giving me this freedom so easily? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Yes, they, exactly. You know, it will not come, they will not accept it. Or there's a woman out there who's Who okay with me dating other people. Unless she's also dating and sleeping with other people. Yes. That's the only thing that can make it make sense to them in their head. And they won't mm -hmm. stay with you mm -hmm. on that one. But I, I will say, you know, just once again being introduced to different things. I remember there was a friend of mine who her boss came to her and said, you know what, um, I've been very interested in you for a couple of years, but I need you to meet my wife. Mm -hmm. And so she went, she met the wife, and the wife asked, you know, all these pertinent questions. How old are you? Are you still, you know, like asking about her cycle? Can you bear children? Would you bear children? Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, if we're going to bring in a second woman, it's because I'm done having kids. And, and they had this really beautiful relationship for like three years. And I remember, you know, when I speak of her, you think I'm speaking of some village girl. Ah, ah, Hong Hong, last number. <laughs> a Hong Hong Hong, you know, like a, you know, Mugel, Mugel, mm. private school girl, you know. And she just entered into this relationship with, the, what was the three of the, or the, the women, and she would even go pick up their kids. And, you know, it was really just an People open. People living my dreams. I would really love um, a, a stable relationship with more than just one other partner. Hey. I would love to raise children with a husband and a wife. I would, also three incomes are better than two. <laughs> yeah. This is true. Yeah. So then tell me, okay, whew, there's so many layers to this. So tell me now, how does your family receive that? Oh, no, my family knows nothing. It's none of their business. <laughs> Should we blur out your face? No, no, no don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they can, they can come fight me if uh, they want. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> but it's honestly, um, no, it's not something I discuss. Um, mm -hmm. My mom doesn't really pressure me about getting married or settling down or... Also, I've always been like the black sheep of the family, kind of. So <laughs> everybody's just like, we know her. She does her own thing. She's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, so there isn't... Um... But did you grow up around polygamy? No, not at all. Not at all? Oh, no, but I, I grew up around a mother who dated. So maybe that, okay, not maybe, that definitely um, made me more open-minded about mm -hmm. relationships mm -hmm. growing up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she dated, she got into relationships, got out of relationships, mm -hmm. and I just saw how, you know, she navigated that, introduced us to that, and mm -hmm. yeah, I think that really shaped how oh. I, I view relationships. And, and your, your siblings, do you have siblings? Yes, I do have siblings. Um, also very different from me. My sister's yes. completely monogamous. Mm. <laughs> My brother, I have no idea. He's a guy. I'm not even trying to talk about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, but he's he, he also seems monogamous uh, yeah, <laughs> i know, know nothing yeah, i don't know anything yeah, but yeah, yeah um I grew sure, up... but the individualism there's something to honor and respect because you know some people always think they need to move to the unit yeah oh and no, so no. that individualism i can say is something that's honorable and and uh, i just envy too. the peace mm -hmm. and the lack of control over yes. your partner because yes. in as much as um we strive towards this giving your partner their own life having having your partner your partner having their own life you your own life mm -hmm. there comes a time where these things become blurred and you find yourself being a not controlling per se but i'm just struggling to term it to say you know they behave particular ways because they are your partner mm -hmm. so i envy the comf comfort and the trust that you mm. um, get in enter relationships into, mm. you know? So all you're saying is, be honest with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. I don't mind anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be honest with Just me. Just be honest. I, yes. Because like, I will be honest. 
maybe I've just never caught anybody cheating, but I think if I were like have, if I were in the situation where I would have caught a partner cheating on me, I think my biggest thing would be why are you lying though? Like why are you always lying? <laughs> like why are you lying? You know, like why why can't we just? But yeah, see now you must tell me to my face. There's another case. <laughs> I don't also... know what I'm asking for, actually. <laughs> and they are both, and they are both healthy relationships mm. that I both equally like. This one is just not. It's not just a piece of meat mm. that I go to for sex. I, mm. I actually gain from this person. Mm-hmm. It's an actual relationship because sometimes um, women that have men in their lives that are not um, gain that are that are that cheat, um, you'll find them saying. He comes back to me. He comes home mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. But because they think of the other person as being maybe a piece of meat or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking in the instance that we're talking about, it's actual almost more than one relationship that's equally as healthy. Mm-hmm. Equally you know? as important. That equally you equally important. put effort towards. Um, most women think he's coming back to me, but the whole time this man has like a seven-year-old going to school that he pays school fees for with another woman. Mm. And yeah, it, it, there's a lot of things. There's also that whole, you know, you, you internalize the things that other people do. Mm. Um, sure. Yes. <laughs> and yes. it's not about and you. you view them as a reflection of, of you. you. And like it really of, is not. Yeah, what, did, what am I missing? What am I what, what, what am I what? And yes. that's why I, I envy that the healthy perspective from which you've, you've approached this, because you're saying it has nothing to do with me mm. and so forth. Relationships are about you, what mm. you want from them. Mm. And that's why I spoke about the fact that um, you could think someone is monogamous, they're just with you. Mm. But what about the other satisfactions they're getting from other people? Mm. They're not sleeping with them, mm. but you find there's a much deeper True. connection with True. them than with you. Well, work husband, yes. work wife. Man, those relationships are deep. Deep. Mm. Those relationships are even to a certain extent, yeah. they'd rather have issues with you over, like they'll have an issue with you be having an issue with, with them. them. Like, is. are you serious? <laughs> I've got this very close guy friend, a platonic friend, and he calls me last week. He's like, all the girls I'm hitting on have a problem with you. They're always like, who's that pretty girl on your timeline? <laughs> <laughs> and that's a real thing, man. Like, you. No, I truly believe our view on relationships comes from um, selfishness, mm-hmm. very individualistic mm-hmm. um, aspirations or very mm-hmm. I- individualistic values. Um, it's not to say um, I wouldn't, because of this, we must all not be monogamous, mm-hmm. but we must also watch what influences that decision, like you yes. said. Monogamy as it stands in our society is actually very toxic. Um, the, the kind of monogamy we've normalized right now is toxic. There was a topic on Twitter where guys were talking about how their partners would come home and smell their privates after work. That is, that is not normal. Yes. <laughs> that is toxic. Yes. Actually, there was a girl who was like, you must, Khaled, you must wash your man's underwear. They don't have discharge, so you ask them, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> and like, I was young. I think I was maybe 19, 20. I'm like, huh? You do what? And she's like, no. Nice thing is I enter into a relationship. Standard procedure, bring your underwear, let me wash it. <sighs> that's crazy. Exactly. And that's what that's we've crazy. made normal. Well, to one... track your partner like that. Yeah. Want to control all their moves. Make... It's so that everything that your partner does is a refle- is a everything that your partner does is a reflection on you, and it's really not. And it it could even start with small things without even cheating, just because your partner was eating an ice cream cone in public. Like ah, what? No man of mine can look on an ice cream cone in public, baby. How are you embarrassing me like toxic, that? Toxic, toxic, toxic masculinity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. the way that we understand monogamy right now, I think that's why people say it's a scam. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily a scam. Yeah. It is achievable, and it can be healthy. Mm. But um, you do need to interrogate do you think, it, guys. We don't have much time. We've got a, a few minutes. But do you guys think that there is? like something that our four parents knew because we all know Wong Ho no and them it was a standard or as long as he's not doing it in your face I mean le hao lae lo or lae lo is like when you're being given advice mm. as a you know they explain that you no know, as long as he's doing it in a respectful way did they know something that us new generation do not know I'm sure they knew that when you fall in love with one person it doesn't mean you're not attracted to anybody else ever again mm-hmm. <laughs> and they just maybe tried to make allowances for that that's the but mm-hmm. I, I also think it's a colonial thing 
Um, I mean, we, most African societies, were very comfortable with polygamous relationships. Mm -hmm. We even had societies that had fraternal polyandro, polyandrous relationships, and there'd be a woman who is married to five brothers and is recognized in that family because that is what she was allowed to do. Mm. So I really think a lot of it comes with um, colonialism and the introduction of Christianity from yep. missionaries. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, I think that's yeah. also something that influenced that and led us to moving towards a society where you just lie. You're just like, okay, you can't stop this person from seeing other people, so they must just lie. Just lie and hide it and pretend it's not happening. And also the burden, yeah, monogamy is on women. Yeah, Men are almost expected to, like, yeah, that cheetah, we know, like, mm. Mm. the burden is on women to be the monogamous one. That time, the man is there in Gauteng on a mine, mm. what, what, mm. but you're the one that must be monogamous. But I, I don't believe that women have been monogamous. Oh, I no. I don't believe that <laughs> it hasn't been condoned, so they hide it very well. Of yeah. course, yeah. you know. Even on Twitter, they're like, if you think you cheat, <laughs> you women. can't cheat. Like, I'm Especially always just like... emotional cheating. <laughs> Like, I think women fall in love with other men a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, even just desiring another man to love you when you're in a relationship, desiring the attention of your colleague, that's very common to women. Women, women are the ones that need to be validated mm -hmm. by those things, you know, and so... And also, I'm just thinking about how easily available it is. That's the other thing for us. I don't know if you get me, but it's like, it's available. Men are just so easy, willing. To be honest, yes, <laughs> very. To, to be monogamous as a woman is very much a very, like, conscious decision. It's a decision. Yes. Because you're constantly being hit on. Yes. You're constantly being approached. Men are constantly... You know, I, I was sitting with a friend that I hadn't seen in many years last night at an, at an event. And about three people came and like, if you want this girl, you better work hard. I don't know these people, you know, but they're immediately assuming that he wants me. Mm. He does. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> you know, but they're, they're all immediately assuming that this man must be hitting on this girl. Mm -hmm. That's the society we're in, where constantly women are being approached, women are being approached. And it is the reality. I mean, you walk out, it's the security guard. And then you keep going, it's... The petrol attendant, you know. And imagine, okay, so there's mm. all these men that are texting, that are talking to you, trying to get your attention, mm. you know, offering you something. There are men with, like, a real thing on the table, you know, not just trying to hit and move on. And then there's your boyfriend who is sliding in people's DMs and just getting rejected <laughs> over and over and over and over. <laughs> and you're just like... Mm. What do I do with this? Do, do you want us to open up this relationship so you can go get rejected mm. freely? And I can also maybe give other people I will show a you. chance, you know? <laughs> I had this other friend. I think maybe was, that's where yeah. the burden is mostly on women to be monogamous. Yes. Because we, we do have options, unfortunately. Yes, that's so just true. the reality of it. Um, and... Sure. Because when he's trying to not be monogamous, get tata my chance, tata my video. <laughs> with me, it's like, I'll show you. Yes, the and... Are there. They also express how difficult it is to, <laughs> to be out there and so forth. Kimani and all of that that will attract other women, right? That's also why there's the apprehension towards a willingly open and non-monogamous relationship. Because mm. now you're thinking, Yo, uh, uh, she's mm. going to be running around with all these guys and I'm going to be struggling to get one mm. other person yes. to talk to me. So, you, it's a lot. <laughs> there's, there's a lot to consider. You know, even in the spirit of progressiveness, we should start, you know, starting, start moving towards the women hitting on men progressiveness direction. So that men can also be liberated from sliding in the DMs. Yeah, yeah and... we have a long way to go on that one. I've seen women shoot their shots, it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> it is sad. Men, men don't like it. Yeah, the, I know. The immediate thing is, what's wrong with you? Mm. <laughs> really? <laughs> Not that I've done it. <laughs> I've never missed. I'm sorry. I love it. Yes. <laughs> I can't relate. I hear you. <laughs> uh, when, you when you aim for the king, you make sure. <laughs> I can't relate. That's amazing. Because thank you so much for having this conversation with us. It was Thanks absolutely you. amazing. And uh, so many opinions here. And I'm sure people have so much 
to say about all of this because there is no wrong or right, especially with a lot of the conversations we have on conversation yeah. capital. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of gray areas that we're looking at, and this is definitely one, one of those. Of you know, some things are black and white. Don't get me wrong. Murder is wrong. <laughs> Pedophilia <laughs> is wrong. Mm. But in life, there are so many gray areas and just trying to navigate. And thank you for being willing to share your story and navigating with us. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. To everybody that's uh, out there listening, thank you so much. This is The Conversation Capital. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about it, your friends' friends, your polyamorous relationship people, your monogamous <laughs> relationship people, whoever you need to tell, tell everybody. I always say, tell your sugar daddy. I don't know why I say that. suspect. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, though, thank you so much for joining us. Goodbye and God bless.